This week on Let's Fish TV, we're at Ross Barnett. Ross Barnett is located just outside of Jackson, Mississippi, and it is loaded with largemouth bass. The fish are spawning, they're up shallow, and I'm telling you right now, guys, we are going to blast them today. We've got a big storm coming in, and I have a feeling those fish are gonna fire up without a doubt. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. Oh, oh, dude. oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Check that out. It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southwest region every week. Cobia Big one. and a monster. Look Beautiful. at that. That's a Tawakini giant. This is Let's Fish. Welcome to Let's Fish TV. I'm your host, Andrew Upshaw, and today we're at Ross Barnett Reservoir. Locally known as The Res, Ross Barnett is 33,000 acres and it is full of fish. Catfish, crappie, bass, you name it. Today though, we're gonna be targeting largemouth bass in shallow water. The fish are spawning and we are definitely gonna be targeting those with swim jigs, swim baits, frogs, and every other bait in between. We'll also have this week's fishing report from your local region from our insider reporters. In the meantime, I'm gonna get this Bass Cat Mercury launch, get everything set up. We'll toss it back to the studio for your weekend planner. Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining us. These salooner tables are predicting fair game fish activity both days this weekend. Look for peak game fish activity to begin at 2.59 on Saturday and 3.44 Sunday afternoon. Evening action will begin around 2.41 on Saturday and 3.24 Sunday. Depending on your area, expect the sun to rise around 7.26 and set around 7.44. This weekend, we'll have a moon that is 17% visible. Make sure to stick around. We've got fishing reports from across the area on the way. Plus, 2014 Bass Master Angler of the Year, Greg Hackney, will be here when we return to answer this week's Ask the Pro question. Today on Let's Fish TV, we're at Ross Barnett Reservoir in central Mississippi. You know, this place is loaded with a lot of really big bass. I've been here a few different times, and I have a feeling that we're going to catch them pretty good today. The weather, has been kind of hit or miss today. We've had some rain, some clouds, some wind, and some sunshine. But I know one thing, the fish are getting ready to spawn and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Let me get out there and see what we can get into today. I got a good feeling about it. Nice one. Oh wow. There we go. Guys, today we are at Ross Barnett. Catching good ones. Check that one out right there. Man, oh man. What an awesome fish. You know, I want to tell you guys real quick about what we're doing here at Ross Barnett. We're in Mississippi now. Mississippi, and we're catching tanks. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that fish. Goodness gracious. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, guys, these fish are pulling up ready to spawn. We're in the springtime of the year, and the fishing here at Ross Barnett, this is the time to be here. That's a really good fish, over four pounds. Just a really solid fish. Let's get this fish back real quick. Guys, what an awesome bass that was. You know, it's a really funny thing that just happened. So I was actually tossing around a Strike King swim jig and I was reeling it up high and I see this fish just roll and miss it. And this is where one of the most important things you can do in bass fishing is to have a good follow up bait. This follow up bait for me is a Strike King Zero. Now you've heard me talk about the Strike King Ocho which is a soft, soft plastic stick bait. This one actually is made of an Elastec material and I'm putting a weight on it. So I use it as a backup flipping bait and I flipped it back up in the exact same spot where that fish was. I reeled it out through there cause I didn't know if she had it or not and she ate it while I was reeling the bait out. But it's really important to have that backup bait. But guys, let me tell you a little bit about Ross Barnett. Ross Barnett is outside of Jackson, Mississippi. And this is not the first time I've been to this place. This place is loaded with big bass. And right now is the time to come here and catch them. 
Now, most of Mississippi is known for its outstanding crappie fishing, from Lake Grenada to Lake Washington, among so many others that have three to three and a half to even four pound crappie in them. But guys, one thing that is not talked about enough is how great the bass fishing is here in Mississippi as well. But I'm gonna showcase it today. I'm gonna show you just how good Ross Barnett can be. I have a feeling we're gonna catch them really good today. Hey everyone, it's time for this week's fishing report. I'm Captain Taylor Borrell with Wave Dancer Charters right here in Galveston, Texas. And as you can tell, it's gotten cold down here on the coast, you know. Uh, we went from having highs in the 80s till today, the high was like 56, I believe. But it's okay though, the fish are still biting and chomping. Might take us a little while to get back on the sheephead from the wind dirtying up the water, but it's okay. We backed off the rock some, been hammering the big black drum, you know, catching 10, 15, 20 a trip now. Uh, they've been averaging anywhere from 20 to upwards of 30, 40 pounds. My buddy down to the east in Sabine said that they've been having a lot of fish on the north levee. Stacked up pretty good and uh, just getting in that spring bite, bite pattern. Remember guys, if y'all ever down here in Houston or Galveston and y'all wanna go fishing, look us up on our website at wavedancercharters.com or uh, give us a call at 409-988-8888. That's it for this week's fishing report. Y'all have a good week. There we go. There we go. Man, he destroyed that swim jig. Holy cow. Jeez. There we go, look at that guys. My goodness. That's the way you want him to eat a swim jig like that. Wow. What a great bass that is. I mean, he wrecked that swim jig. Let's get this fish back and we're gonna talk a little bit about it. God, they're blowing up everywhere. This is crazy, guys. Oh my gosh. Guys, that fish came from about five foot away to destroy that swim jig. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm using a pretty special swim jig today. This swim jig right here is an, an Academy exclusive. This is a Strike King Hack Attack. This is an Academy Select swim jig. It's a quarter ounce and I've got a little uh, Strike King baby rage crawl on here. Now, the unique thing about this particular swim jig is it actually has a owner jungle hook. This is the exact same hook that I flip with and the same hook that you're gonna find in the Thunder Cricket. It has a four alt size hook in it. And let me tell you guys, when those fish come out there and hit it, it is the sharpest, strongest hook that I've ever found. You know, and the, the deal is, is Strike King didn't just send these to me. I went to Academy and bought them myself. That's how much confidence I have in this particular swim jig. Anytime that I'm having to use braid and I'm keeping that bait up in the water column, I want something that has a good hook, a solid hook, and a sharp hook. And I think that's one of the most important aspects of a swim jig is having the right hook, having the right type of line tie. This is a horizontal line tie and it is a more uh, compact head design. Therefore, you can slip in and around that cover and that's what you need now, here at Ross Barnett. And let me tell you guys, Ross Barnett is one of those places that is really, really cool. It has a lot of fish in it, especially in the springtime. And right now that's where we're at. The fish are spawning, they're up shallow, they're up and around this grass, and we're gonna break down the pattern. You know, so far I've caught a couple fish, caught one on a swim jig, one on a Strike King Zero, and it's all about paying attention to your surroundings. I'm using the, the swim jig to kind of cover some water, and when I need to slow down, I'm picking up the Zero and cleaning up with it. But I'm gonna get back to it. There's a bunch of alligators around and a bunch of fish busting. I have a feeling we're gonna catch a lot more today. Let's get back to it, and I'll see y'all here in just a second. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury, Go Boldly, Lorance, the ultimate fishing system, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan or book your fishing charter at orangebeach.com. Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor, powered by passion. Glacier Outdoor, outdoors since 1982. That one got it. There we go. There we go, guys. Got 
one got it. There we go. There we go, guys. Whoo. Here at Ross Barnett, we're catching biggins on a swim jig. Check that out. Oh my God, look at that scar on him. I wonder if one of these big old gators, I bet that is from a big old gator. He's got three or four real big gashes on his side here. And I've seen some of those dinosaurs type gators here. He ate that swim jig. There we go, got him. Another three plus pound bass. I mean, it's probably closer to three and a half pounds. Just a gorgeous fish, minus this big old gash in his belly. But he'll be all right. We'll let him go and, and get back ready to, to go lay some eggs. I swear that fish blew that, that swim jig up about a foot or two in the water. He just absolutely mauled it. You know, but the cool thing is, is where we're at is Ross Barnett, Mississippi. It's just outside of Jackson. And this place, this I've been here for like three or four different Bassmaster tournaments. And it seems like every single time we come here, somebody blasts a big bag. The last time we were here, Lee Livesay won that event and had a really big bag of fish on the first day. I mean, there's unlimited amount of cover. You know, you've got gator grass and pads and reeds and pad stems and all this different cover in the water. The water's dirty, so you can grind up there shallow and catch those fish. But beyond just Ross Barnett, there's a lot of great lakes all through Mississippi. And there's some that have some of the biggest crappie that you've ever seen in your life. Grenada being one of them, Lake Washington, among so many other big lakes around here. When you come to Mississippi, you can go fish for just about anything you want to and catch some really good fish, whether it's bass or crappie or anything else, catfish. But today has been fun. I'm gonna get back to it. The fish are biting here in Mississippi. You need to come check it out, guys. Like I'm telling you, come down here. Don't just come here to fish a tournament or something like that. Come down here and come fun fishing. You'll figure it out fairly quickly and you'll catch you some really nice bass. I mean, we hadn't been out here just a couple hours today and we've already caught quite a few nice ones already. Hey friends, Captain Kevin Broussard here with this week's Let's Fish Report coming to you from Hackberry, Louisiana, right here at Cajun Paradise Charters. Tell you what, we're gonna start out on the saltwater side of things right now. With these fronts coming through, it really slowed down the saltwater fishing. Lots of hard north wind, strong northeast winds a day or two after the front, cold temperatures. Tell you what, the bite slowed down, still catching lots of redfish, Trout fishing has been off. Live shrimp, dead shrimp seem to be the key there for the redfish. Just look for some water draining out of your shallow marshes. And that's basically all along the whole Louisiana coast. Homa, Delacroix, right here on Calcasieu. Tell you what, even some of the marshes off Black Bayou and Sabine Lake. For old Cajun Phil, I'm Captain Kevin Broussard saying happy fishing. May God bless and we're gonna see you next week. I'm Matt Pangrak from the Bass Talk Live podcast and this is your Oklahoma fishing report for the week. There were two major tournaments that took place in Oklahoma over the week, the first being the Flamingo Marine Tournament Trail on Lake Eufaula, which was won with over 17 pounds. There was also an MLF Toyota Series event that was won by Blake Caps with over 59 pounds of bass in three days on Grand Lake. In both tournaments, Rip Rap, Secondary Points, and Channel Swings with Chunk Rock using an umbrella rig, and jerk baits. Now, the fishing is a little tough in the state right now due to a massive cold front that swept through the area several days ago. Both Lake Murray and Arbuckle have kicked out double digit bass over the past week. Main Lake points, Alabama rigs, and jerk baits. If you want to know more information about professional bass fishing in Oklahoma and across the country, check out the BTL podcast every Monday through Thursday on the Bass Talk Live YouTube channel and your favorite podcasting platform. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Visit Mississippi. Wanderers welcome. Powerful. Total boat control. Balls out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. Rely on. Challenge your limits. There we go. Oh gosh, she just ran from about five foot away and just wrecked that thing. Like 50 yard area right here has got some dang bass in it. I know that. There 
we go. Got it. There we go. Oh gosh, she just ran from about five foot away and just wrecked that thing. There we go. I mean a big old fat one too. There we are. Wow. Check that out guys. Holy cow. Another nice bass on the Strike King swim jig. Goodness gracious. So just a couple casts before that, I had I my line kind of hitched a little bit and it stopped. And when I started to engage it, all I felt was like that sucking sound and it missed it. Made a few casts in there and I did what I would recommend doing is letting it sit for about a couple minutes and then casting back in there. Let that fish set back up and then making the right cast and getting her to bite. So let's get this fish back. Whoo, man. My heart is racing right now, guys. Holy cow. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by Costa Del Mar Sunglasses. Their goal is to build the best sunglasses on the planet for those folks who live to be on the water. Now, this week, we're going to start at Lake Tawakini with blue cats that are moving up shallow. They're following the shad that are moving up to spawn, so you'll want to use either cut bait or live shad to catch those shallow cats. Fish around the dam. Now at Richland Chambers, the Sandys have moved up the creeks, both the Richland and the Chambers arm. But keep in mind, if you don't want to go all the way up the creeks to chase them, you can still find fish out on the main lake. They don't all spawn at once, and they won't all go up the creeks. Look to very windy points to find some of those main lake spawning sand bass on Richland Chambers. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes. Be sure and check us out on Facebook, Lone Star Lakes. There we go. There's another nice one there. Oh, there we go. That's why you have a backup bait right there. No, oh, there we go, guys. Threw my swim jig in there. She smoked it, took a leg off my trailer. I picked up that Strike King Zero and put another nice one in the boat. And that is the importance right there of having that backup bait. I mean, goodness gracious, another really great fish. I'd, I'd go out on a limb to say our best five today, probably around that 18 to 19 pound range. A lot of really solid three and a half, three and three quarter to four pounders today. Another just really good one. Let's get this fish back real quick and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Guys, I can't stress how important it is to have a good backup bait. One that you have confidence in and one that you can get in on the spot very quickly. That's what I was doing with the Strike King Zero today. It's a soft plastic stick bait and I use a little eighth ounce weight on this. This particular plastic tends to float more. So when I'm throwing this particular piece of plastic, I want a weight. That way it'll kind of nose down, but the bait will stay higher in the water column. The, this is probably one of the more overlooked stick worms that Strike King makes. You know, the Ocho is a fantastic bait, especially weightless, and that is a bait that I turn to all the time. But the Zero still has its place, and, and today we're fishing around Ross Barnett. The water is pretty darn dirty. I mean, like a lot of times we're digging on the bottom when we're trolling around, so that means you're talking a foot to foot and a half. Uh, of depth and you can't even remotely see the bottom. So June bug, as far as the color goes for the, the Strike King Zero and throwing that white swim jig. And that's how I actually found that fish. I threw that white swim jig up there and I'm rolling it and burning it across and the fish blows up on it, eats the tail off of it. I immediately re-rig me a new crawl on my, my swim jig and I pick up the Zero and on the second flip, I caught the fish. So be smart when you're out there you're throwing any moving bait i don't care if it's a, a vibrating jig a swim jig uh, a top water whatever it is have a good backup follow-up bait and you will load the boat with it i mean you might not catch 100 on it during the day but you'll catch that fish that you missed and sometimes it's a really big one today it wasn't necessarily but it was still a really good one but yeah that's what i throw guys 
pick you up some Strike King Zeros and you'll be surprised how great they work. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lose, Feel the Difference, Mamba Boats, Ride with Pride, Strike King, Taiwan On, Fishing Specialties, makers of the premier mount assembly for live sonar. Welcome back everybody. Let's get right on over to your Ask the Pro question for this week. Gordon wants to know, what lake gets your vote as best bass lake in America and why? To get the answer, we checked with 2014 Bass Master Angler of the Year, Greg Hackney. You know, honestly, to me, the best bass lake in America is the one we're going to in a week from now is Santee Cooper in Southern uh, South Carolina. And for me personally, I grew up on a body of water fishing cypress trees and Santee is full of cypress trees. But the cool thing about it is it, it's, like, it's like it's got an eight pounder on every cypress tree in it. So, and not just because I like to fish that way and it is such a great lake, I just feel like it suits my style of fishing and I get to fish the way I like to fish. Thanks so much, Greg. If you want some help from one of the pros too, simply go to letsfishtv.com, follow the Ask the Pro link and then submit your very own question. Here's today's Right Stuff presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Today at Ross Barnett, I used a couple different baits to catch my bass. You know, honestly, day in and day out on Ross Barnett, you can get the job done with a swim jig. You know, this is a quarter ounce Hack Attack Select swim jig. It's an Academy exclusive, so that's the only place you can find them. You know, this is a quarter ounce Strike King swim jig. It's white with a baby Rage Crawl. This is just the trailer I like to use. It's a little bit more compact than the bigger Rage Crawl, and I feel like it keeps that jig just right under the surface perfectly where I can catch those fish. 30 pound braid. This is Strike King Contra braid with a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio Lose Pro TI. But I'm gonna tell you guys, the Team Lose Signature Series swim jig rod, it's a seven and a half footer, I really think made a huge difference. I mean, because I was able to load into those fish, I wasn't pulling the, the, the hook out. And I was always getting so frustrated when I would set the hook on a fish, especially throwing a swim jig where I could see them, I was pulling the hook out of their mouth so many times. And I'm not running that whatsoever with this. Back that drag off though, it's really important. The other thing I used, and I actually caught my very first four pounder of the day on it, was a Strike King Zero. This is a soft plastic stick bait. It's an Elastec type uh, formula with an eighth ounce weight, 20 pound Strike King fluorocarbon. And I was using the 7.2 Jig Worm Rod. This is Signature Series Luge Rod and another 7.5 to 1 Pro TI Luge Reel. You have to have a good backup bait whenever you're targeting fish with the swim jig, a frog, or any kind of moving bait. I opted for the Texas rig today. I felt like I could get in and around that cover a little bit better than a weightless rig and I think it added a few more fish to the day for sure. But overall guys, it was a great experience here at Ross Burnett. I hope you learned how to find and catch them. And until next time, I'll see you on the water.